uh, make sure everyone gets vaccinated, but how life has changed since we've all been vaccinated. It's hard to describe, but it's it makes life a breeze as well. And if life is a breeze, you're managing your diabetes is a breeze too. And we're going to talk about continuous glucose monitoring, which is really becoming the standard of care for type 2. Mm -hmm. And the other area that so many of you type 2 struggle with is weight and some of the newer uh, medications that treat not only your diabetes, may protect your heart, your kidney, but also used in higher doses that are safe, help people lose a significant amount of weight. Mm -hmm. And we know that's, that's key. And we're gonna talk about some other issues as well, but it is managing type two diabetes. Being a type one, sometimes I, I think it's even tougher than type one, in a way. Uh, the fact that you have to take a zillion pills, we're gonna talk about you know, being a polypharmacy condition. And so, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, seeing your reactions, answering your questions online. Yeah, and so, you know, just a reminder, Steve and I both have type one diabetes. These two, we're trying to give it to them and it hasn't worked so far. <laughs> She's honorary. Yeah, honorary. Yeah. So they're doing the type two breeze lecture. And so that's, they get two of you. And I'm doing the type one, you know, diabetes breeze lecture. And it's just one of me. And yeah, I start with that diabetes is not a breeze and some of my epic fails actually in terms of when t things have gone really bad, but just how to basically realize that diabetes is hard, but you wanna live a long and healthy life and how, how do you kind of reconcile those things? And at one point in my talk, I actually go through the 10 things that I tell every patient that I see with type one diabetes, things that are just kind of coming up over and over again in people that I see in clinic. Because a lot of times people will say, well, can I come see you? You know, you have appointments, whatever. I can't see everybody, nobody can. So it's almost like everybody here can come to an appointment with me and, and hear my top you know, tips and tricks to try to make diabetes a breeze. And I gotta say, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm excited to watch myself in a minute and then answer questions live. So that's how this is gonna work. That we've recorded some of these lectures, but we'll be there live answering your questions and comments. So it actually works really well, I think. So um, let's jump to you, Schaefer. So you're actually talking about exercise in specifically for type twos. So mm -hmm. give us a little teaser or thoughts yeah, about that. Yeah, this part of the type two track. I mean, exercise is, is an, an important part of sort of general health, I think, for everybody. It fits into this, um, you know, conference because, of course, you know, whether it's a vacation or a staycation, we want to <laughs> look good, you know, get our beach bodies. But ultimately, it's about being healthy um, and, and sort of, uh, you know, the approach is finding exercise or physical activity that you can stick with and make it part of your life. And so that our whole talk is about that. And in type two diabetes, again, you know, a big components of people who are overweight and obese. And so, so the weight loss is one part of that, but a lot of it has to do with heart health, um, you know, uh, uh, preventing and reducing the risk of complications. And honestly, physical activity just um, makes you feel better. And that's actually been scientifically proven. So the studies show you feel better, you have more energy, you sleep better, better sex life, and it's good for diabetes. So it's kind of, um, do you <laughs> no, no, I was just gonna make a comment. <laughs> Go for it. Yes, yeah. Steve. You know, I mean, I, I would say this, that honestly, when Schaefer gave this presentation at a, in a different conference years ago, and I'm thinking, is it really, how's he going to get up there, this tall, slender, svelte guy, talk about exercise in people with type 2? And I was really impressed. So Schaefer has been, this is one of his areas of interest. And um, the other thing I was going to say is that 85% of people with type 2 have weight problems. It's inherent in the metabolic condition, and there's very few that are skinny, many, but being overweight um, is one thing, and being out of shape is another. So mm -hmm. you could be heavy and be in good shape, uh, and it has so many good benefits, including uh, your sex life, as Schaefer brought out. No, you could be skinny like me and be completely out of shape. <laughs> and so, totally. uh, it, so physical activity, you know, exercise, it's, it's important for everybody. I think this is the perfect time for that talk too and really to use Schaefer's talk to get motivated because this is when exercise really can be a breeze. Now that things have moved online over the past year, I think it's one of the benefits. There's so many more things available for you mm -hmm. to do at home. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really a new thing these days. You don't have to get a gym membership to get into shape. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a good comment. You know, people think, Oh, to exercise, I got to put on spandex, and I got to, you know, drive to the gym, and I got to do this. You know, it's very practical things that people can do walking around, you know, and stuff like that. But it just like, takes a little motivation, and that's what Schaefer's here for. Correct. Steve always has to get the last word in. Anyway. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, all right. So back to uh, type ones real quick. We have uh, Stephen Ponder doing his talk on, on sugar surfing. So 
Stephen Ponder, he's just kind of a kook, you know, he's just a <laughs> pediatrician that we love. He's always got crazy hats on, literally. Um, I love him. Uh, he's really entertaining, but he wrote this. So he has type 1 diabetes. He's a, a pediatric endocrinologist. Um, and he wrote a book called Sugar Surfing. It's all about really like kind of how to look at your continuous glucose monitor, how to really surf your sugar in terms of keeping in range and all these kind of uh, practical tips that he really kind of rapid fires at you. But people love it because it's it's great information. He has a book that you can also go out and buy. Um, any comments about his lecture? We, we love Stephen. Am I allowed to say something? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what's funny? You're right. I think a, he's a smart kook who has type 1. And I, I love his book. But one thing that's so funny about him, one time I said to him, Steve, um, have you ever surfed in your life? He goes, no, he lives in <laughs> Texas. And so sugar surfing is a funny name for him. But I love, I love his phrase, you know, waiting for the bend in the curve. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start taking action before you get extremely low or extremely high. So, and people do love him. He spoke at our yearly one conference uh, and was super popular. So he's a, he's a regular part of our faculty. And I'm actually doing a session too that's going to be live with myself and some other, you know, type one endos where people can live answer questions, ask questions and get answers and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what hat he has on um, <laughs> later today. Um, so that's great. I'm glad he's here. You know, back to the type two track, we actually have a, a talk on mindfulness, which I'm glad I think is very progressive of us here at TCOID. Just um, because, again, the whole vibe is, yeah, diabetes is tough. But how can you come to, to peace with it? You know, how can you motivate yourself to take your medications, you know, do the exercise, whatever, but still not have it, you know, dominate your life and, and be mindful and present in everything you're doing, you know, throughout your life. So you guys have any experience with mindfulness? I mean, I think this is arguably maybe the most important topic for people with type 2 diabetes. I, I think when I see patients in the clinic, the biggest thing that they're worried about a lot of the time is they can't get over kind of the burden of diabetes and the shame and the guilt that they have about having type two as if it's their fault, which it's for some reason people understand mm. that type one is, you know, a genetic disease, but for type two, people don't understand it's also a genetic disease and it's not their fault. But I think that it kind of goes along with mindfulness. Obviously mindfulness is a big topic and, and you know, we'll talk about a lot more than that, but I think, it's very hard to kind of take control of your diabetes and take your medications and and kind of be on board all the time without just, you know, giving yourself a break and and you know, having that kind of peace of mind about having the disease. Yeah, and I would just say this, it, you know, the mindfulness is in the type 2 track. However, I think it'd be helpful for everybody that attends, type 1, type 2, type 3. And remember, these lectures are up for 30 days. You can go back at any time and I would highly recommend it and also say being a guy, you know, I'm not a big yoga guy, uh, you know, I don't eat quiche and mindfulness, I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> do, do I really need to do that? But ever, every time I do it at a conference or when I follow the instructions, it, it doesn't take much time and man, do I feel relaxed afterwards. I do think it's an, a tre tremendous technique just to take a pause in your day and mellow out a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm embarrassed to say that UCSD actually has a mindfulness course. I don't know if I ever told you guys this. Hmm. I enrolled in it and it was like from 6 to 8 p.m. once a week for like eight weeks. And I dropped out halfway through because I didn't have time to be mindful. And I want to yeah. go back and take it again because it is important just to take time and be present in, in anything and everything that you're doing. And along those lines, Bill Polonsky is talking about kind of, he's a behavioral psychologist about all these things, how to just, you know, um, uh, kind of come to terms with your diabetes, how to engage in it, how to kind of drop the guilt. And what we'd probably talk about in our, in our type one and type two breeze lectures is that if you take care of yourself, take these medications, you can and will live a long and healthful, healthy life. I think like I say in my type one breeze lecture that, you know, I think a lot of people feel that they're damaged, they're unhealthy. It's just like, you know, the, the game's over already. And that's not the case. These medications can help people lose weight, help, you know, kind of re-engage in their life. So in a lot of ways, I say getting type one was the best thing that ever happened to me because it's made me very mindful of my of my healthy living choices and things like that. And the same thing can happen for people with type twos. Yeah. It can really light a fire in your butt to, to change your life in a positive way and go on a diabetes vacation and enjoy your life, whatever. I'll just say okay. I was here, Bill just filmed the lecture. He'll be online answering. And his lecture is taking a vacation from diabetes. So yeah. he's actually focusing in a little bit more about 
how, do, how, how does that happen and how do you do it safely? And for everybody, taking a vacation from your diabetes is a little bit different. Right. Mm. And that segues into a type 1 talk that you and I did, Steve, that was really fun. Oh, yeah. Traveling with, with type 1 diabetes. And um, this is, you know, I think a good time also for this lecture because people are traveling again. Mm -hmm. You know, I have something on the, on the books for July I'm excited about. I'm already packing my bag. You know, we're all looking forward to, you know, trips because that's part of what people look forward to. So Steve and I literally stood yeah. right here. We brought our suitcases yeah. and went through everything that we pack um, for going on a vacation for diabetes. And we needed like a whole bag for it. Or your insulin stuff, your CGM, your glucose tabs, all of that. Um, we did a fun little intro too for that. That's uh, that's really entertaining. And we 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 didn't talk about it before, but we actually did a pretty good job in, in terms of bringing the same stuff. But I usually do rely on Steve to bring more than me because, like, <laughs> at least once a trip, I'm calling him. Yeah. Hey, man. At least, <laughs> at least. <laughs> and I pack for myself. I yeah. pack for Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have a diet buddy. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway. that's another talk that type twos could also watch. Sure. I mean, type twos are not necessarily using all of the gear. You may not have an insulin pump or that kind of stuff, but for sure, I think there's some important tips that they can learn from that lecture. And you, you hit you hit the nail on the head, Schaefer. It's good to have a diet buddy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's a good point, Trish. There's not gonna be a bouncer at the door of these talks. Hey, do you, you know, show me your type one documentation? Like you can you can go to any talk that you want to that you find relevant. We're all blood brothers, like like Steve always says, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to segue into a little bit of some of the on-demand content. So again, the way that this works is that the, the live sessions will be, you know, on the schedule that you can see. But if, if one lecture doesn't really interest you or, you know, you want to come back and, and rewatch things, these lectures will all be on this VFAIRS website for 30 days. So you have all that time to come back and look at all this content. And there's another 20 or 30 lectures or so that are there. And I was just going through the list and it's really pretty impressive. Some things I wanted to, to call out is because we're talking about exercise and, and weight with type 2 diabetes. There's a talk by Jenny Luna on, on specifically weight loss. And this is more geared towards type 2s, um, but new medications, um, surgery options, things like that, because that's such an important topic. Yep. You know, and it, there's many different ways that you could actually lose weight. Everything from mindfulness to medications to the good old uh, exercise caloric restriction choosing the right foods, getting a diet buddy that, you know, that also needs to lose a little bit of weight. So she's, yep. and she's excellent. The benefits of weight loss are huge. I mean, it's something that it, I think in, in diabetes, we probably don't talk about weight as much as we should because, uh, you know, both in, in type one, two, and this is something that Jeremy and I are interested in, in, in insulin resistance and, and how your body reacts to insulin. But, you know, type one, the population tends to be a little bit overweight and even obese, just like everyone else in, in, in our country. And in type two, even more so, but losing weight can help your diabetes substantially. And in, in type two diabetes, you know, people who have lost a lot of weight, you know, five, 10% of their body weight and, and maintain that, sometimes the diabetes essentially goes away. I mean, you know, you're never totally cured per se, but you can get off medications and that sort of thing and, and have a normal blood sugar, which is the key, right? You don't want to stop your meds if you don't have a normal blood sugar. But yeah. weight loss is a big deal and it yeah. helps protect the heart. It does all these other things. So And you're so right, really like, and especially bringing up the type ones, like majority of type ones in the country are either overweight or obese. Other than us. Yeah. Other than us. So we talk about it all the time in type twos. Um, but as type ones, we struggle and, and there's, there's reasons for that. We have to take insulin. You go low. You might have to eat when you don't want to eat. It makes, you know, exercise more difficult. All these things that can make uh, us a little bit more prone to gaining weight. So if you're a type one and you feel like you need to lose some pounds, you're actually in the majority. That's, that's the kind of a common problem for type ones that we forget about. We think of type ones, oh, they're all four and five year old kids running around super fit. We all grow up and we can eat McDonald's too, you know, and, and gain weight or whatever it might be. So... Um, anyways, that was one, yeah, I, you want to get the I, last one, word? One last word yeah. is that <laughs> one of the reasons why your doctor, if you have type two, doesn't talk about weight loss is because we don't, we haven't had too many good tools. So if you, you don't have good tools, you know, you kind of skip over it. But one thing Trisha and I are going to talk about are these SGLT2 drugs that are commonly on the market now for type two, and they could really help you lose weight. And the side effect profile is super good. So yeah, we have tools now. And I think by that, by having this information, bringing it up with your caregiver, you might be able to get some help. Yeah. And the other thing, you know, not just the SGLT2s, but the GLP-1 meds, which again, we'll talk about in our Breeze lecture, 
there's really exciting stuff coming out right now where these medications are causing weight loss similar to getting bariatric surgery, mm -hmm. which is incredible in mm -hmm. my mind, you know, just from a medication. So it's unbelievable. Get excited to talk about that today. No, I, whenever I yeah, hear about this, I'm legitimately um, jealous that type twos have these options. And, you know, for type ones, we don't right now because these, that's how powerful these medications really yeah. are. Yeah. Um, to run through some, some other things that are on demand, um, some kind of complications of diabetes. If you're dealing with, you know, issues with dental health, cardiovascular disease, a whole, you know, lecture on how to protect your heart, musculoskeletal stuff, joints, muscle pains, frozen shoulder, you know, hand issues, stuff like that. Your feet, these are all things that kind of come up with diabetes. There's separate lectures on that that you can watch, you know, especially if that's something that you came here looking for answers for. And then some other things I want to specifically call out. I love, Steve, that you did this talk called Diabetes on the Cheap. And tell us about that. Well, I did one for type 1 and for type 2. And basically, uh, not everyone has good health insurance. Not everyone can afford even their co-pays if they do have health insurance. So I just gave uh, techniques and strategies how to get your blood sugars in a safe and good range using older generic medications. And that's basically it. And I, I think it is definitely doable. You might need to put a little more work into it, but you don't. You won't miss out if you don't have access to these bigger, fancier drugs. And that's why I did it. And there's a lot of people around the world uh, watching these lectures now from 100 countries, actually. And those folks don't have access to the new medication, not even approved in some of these countries. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an important lecture. And it, it's, yeah, that's I what it's about. I think that's important because, you know, we always get excited about the new stuff in Tina's glucose monitors, artificial pancreas. And you can... If you don't have access to that, you can think, well, then what chance do I have of getting, you know, under control? And Steve, you've been around for a while and you've been, you know, treating people with, with diabetes with these older techniques and it, they, they can be really efficacious. That's why it was so easy to give a lecture here. <laughs> uh, and by the way, on our website, we have a resource center that help you get access to these medications. Cool. Um, the other one I wanted to call out is that, you know, you did this one, finding your sweet spot. It's more of a, a type oh. one top talk, um, how to keep your time in range. And I just wanted to mention that because that is really nuts and bolts of, you know, kind of practical tools to, to for type ones, keep your blood sugars in range. Um, anything that you want to talk about with that or? You know, I'll just add that many of the things, that's one of my favorite talks. Okay. My other favorite was with, with Schaefer, which is in our video vault, yeah. Think Like an Endo. That just really goes over some of the major points that you've covered in several of your lectures in the type one track. So it just brings it all together, maybe a different format, presented a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. But I think the important take home about that is that diabetes is a disease that the patient manages. It's yeah. not a disease that you manage every three it's months true. when you go see your doctor. Mm -hmm. So that talk's so important because it shows you, it gives you tools to manage it on your own right. and, and what to do in between those doctor's visits. What's the name of this organization? Yeah. Taking control of your Diabetes. And that's yeah. that's so important because that is the whole kind of mission and statement of this organization. Yeah. Get activated, get motivated, get educated, take control. Be educated. Go to your provider with, hey, I heard about X, Y, and Z. And your provider will kind of perk up a little bit. Like, oh, okay. This person knows what they're talking about. Like, and it becomes a more engaging conversation. And when you get motivated and engaged, yeah, you, like we said, you will live a long and healthy life. So I wanted to start closing by saying, again, a little bit of nuts and bolts of how this works. So I mentioned all this on-demand content that's going to be on this BFAIRS website for 30 days. But then every all the content that we do with each new conference lives forever on the TCOAD website in what we call the Video Vault. And Eric, I think you can probably put the link up there. He's really good at doing links. Um, <laughs> and so you guys can click on it. And it's organized by type 1s, type 2s, type 3s, which we call people that don't have diabetes but support people with diabetes. And there's now hundreds of, of lectures on any topic you can you can imagine that's all there for free. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, I also wanted to say that, you know, people ask us, how do, how do we kind of do all this? And it's worth mentioning that TCOID is an organization of 10, 12 people, maybe total. I mean, it's a small kind of lean and mean organization. I think I mentioned in the beginning, you know, at the songs, we do all this stuff in house. We're doing this right now on the, the TCOID website. I know Eric's going to make it look like we're in a big, you know, giant like auditorium, a hall. We're in a very small, intimate room right now. Um, so the point I wanted to make for that is that if you do have it within your means to make donations, please do, because we really do put every dollar to use um, to kind of keep it, like I said, lean and mean, um, to, to take those dollars and put it towards um, content 
um, virtually right now, and then again when we can in person. So Steve, this is your show, so do you want to say anything about that? Well, you know what, <clears throat> I think all of you said some nice things, but basically um, one reason why we make it complimentary, we don't want any obstacles for anybody, any family, anywhere in the world to learn. And you know, it takes a lot to run the organization. I should say thank you to the other 10 folks that work for TCOID that never get in the limelight, but we appreciate any funding that you can help us with and doesn't matter what the amount is. So yeah. we do, we don't ask a lot and I don't, I don't like being, I don't like asking people. I'm uncomfortable doing that, but we do need help with the funding and we put the money to good use and we have a very tight budget. That's why we're wearing t-shirts today. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so our timer just went to zero. So let's say goodbye, but only that for a couple minutes because we'll see you at the next talk and thanks everybody for tuning in.